And good morning, everybody. Doug Marola, the freelance teacher, is talking with you again in the summer weekday, Wednesday. Not such wonderful weather here in the Bronx, but we make it work somehow. And we are talking today about economics. And a couple of things, of course, come up uh, when I start talking about or saying the word economics. One is people get the deer in the headlights zoned, does not compute, uh, a vacuous, mouth-breathing death stare. You bring up something like economics, which is a shame because basic economic knowledge can really change a lot. I had a, a, a colleague send me a video about how knowing economics is, is so important. And her focus on this on the video and sending it to me was this guy was lecturing on how having an economy and having knowledge of economics could be a great boon to the black community. Of course, she was right. The speaker was correct. But you mentioned things like economics and people kind of, you know, take a nap, which is a which is a crying shame because the people who know about economics and learn it and study it, even when they're uncomfortable or bored while learning it, they come out with a, a, a much greater advantage in the economic world, in the money-making world, in the marketing world, and things like that. So what what made me think of this was I put, uh, there's a lecture by Joe Salerno, uh, who works, he's a professor at Pace, and he's part of the Mises.org group. He's one of the Aust- main Austrian economic uh, ec- uh, economists uh, at Mises.org, which is the Austrian School of Free Market Capitalist Economics. And it's a very academic place. There's so much material that a person could learn. I think it's the best school of economics. Remember, there's the Chicago Monetarists. There's the Keynesians. There's the Public Choice School of Economics. There are different brands, so to speak, of economics in the sense that there are different brands of soda or cola. You can get a Pepsi, an RC Cola, Coke. You know, you can get the local name brand cola. So... The idea is I put up a a lecture by Joe Salerno on the gold standard. And I put it on Facebook with the comment because, look, I know people aren't going to listen to or watch an hour and 20 minutes of Joe Salerno looking at the gold standard unless there's a reason for them to do it. Um, Because it takes time and concentration to... um, to do something like that, to, to listen to something that on the surface is so bland and dull that, um, that, you know, who's going to, who's going to volunteer for that? Ah, let's watch a, let's, let's, let's watch a lecture on the bone structure of the Ibex. You know, people aren't going to do that. So what I did was I put, um, you know, Professor Salerno, Pace, talks about the gold standard, it's past, the myths that are surrounding it. He debunks those myths, and then he talks about how the gold standard would work today. And then I added what I thought was a pretty good line about how the gold standard would keep the federal government from doing whatever it wanted. If you didn't like the federal government, you should love the gold standard because the gold standard keeps the federal government from just arbitrarily doing whatever it pleases. And in today's world, where, again, I'm a public school teacher, I live in the Bronx, I work at Mount Vernon High School, You know, you'd think that, hey, we can limit Trump. Um, This is something to at least learn about. No. Um, I got two likes, which I didn't expect it to blow up Facebook. Let's let me be clear. But, you know, it's it's weird how these things work socially because you have um, I'll put a picture of myself up with a bunch of students and then the virtue signaling and the status jockeying begins and I get 80 gazillion likes and a, a slew of comments and all kinds of stuff. So, I, you know, it, it shows the surface level of anything on social media. Maybe it really is just a platform to virtue signal, status jockey, and sell stuff, I, I guess. Because there's very little um, stuff of note, of um, status, stuff of... Um, depth. There's very little depth there. Uh, interestingly enough, people with whom I disagree, uh, these people and I have had long typed out conversations 
and and that's that's great but it, it, people that I agree with uh, anyway you get the point the thing with the gold standard that everybody seems to forget and it plays directly into what I was talking about with you well yeah you us the American people the idea was that the federal government would be limited you can limit what your federal government does because the federal government in conjunction with the Federal Reserve cannot simply just create money on the fly. So, just to give a basic example, if you are not happy with endless war, are you against the administration going into foreign country X and doing a regime change like the United States with the CIA's help in the 1950s did in Iran? Or the completely disastrous Iraq War I and Iraq War II uh, military engagement war disastrous. I mean, no six ways to Sunday, epic fail. Going into Afghanistan, going into Yemen, all the stuff. Look, I have a nephew in the Marines. They're overseas playing games. Not defending, right, Department of Defense. Defending what? The Americans in the Middle East who are crying out for defense? Anyway, you know, <laughs> you don't like that kind of stuff? Can't do it. Maybe you're against uh, government handouts to a certain industry. Could be the farm lobby. Could be big agriculture. It could be the automobile industry. Whatever it is, the gold standard, because a government slash in our world now since 1913, the Federal Reserve, cannot just create money. The government can't just do what it wants. It is limited. It has to pay for, like you have to pay for something, it has to pay for what it wants. Right now, in our corrupt TFF, totally fake funds, completely fake money system, the government, well, Federal Reserve, can just create money to do what it wants. Why do you think that the, the, the federal budget is so mental? Quote unquote, tr- 20 trillion in debt. Yeah, real number is 200 trillion. That 20 trillion, 20 plus trillion does not include promises made to every American with Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Yeah, the real number is not 20 plus trillion, it's 200 trillion. You gonna pay for that? So that's the thing, right? If you want a new car, you have to pay for it somehow. You can take out a loan, you gotta pay back the loan, you can stroke a check for 27 grand and buy a Subaru if you want, right? You want to buy the truck behind me that's going by? You can, you can do that, but you got to pay for it. In the old days, the government had to pay for it. So if it wanted to go to war in foreign country X, there's X amount of gold in the U.S. Treasury. That gold represented the amount of money, the amount of capital in the U.S. Treasury. So if the government wanted to provide hurricane relief for uh, residents, uh, citizens in Oklahoma, it had to come up with the money for it. Now the Federal Reserve floats, just creates money. What it does is it sells bonds and then that debt instrument is now money. It just created it. So I mean, we're going to sell X billions of dollars of bonds today and they sell them daily. They sell stuff that they don't have. And that debt is then monetized into, oh, we have this amount of money on our books. It would be like you opening up your bank browser and being able to move the decimal place around. I sure would like to do that. Can I move the decimal place to the right a few way, a few places? That's what your, that's what your federal government can do. Yeah. Donald Trump can do this. The Trump administration can do this. They have to do this because all the stuff that the federal government does, it has to be paid for somehow. But we live in a completely artificial financial situation. It's just funny money. It's just made up money. We have green slips of paper and we have digits on the screen. Why do you think that people who follow the gold standard or advocate for the gold standard are called gold bugs or have some obsession about gold. 
or the the all time favorite. You can, hey, you know, people talk about gold, and people are oh, the critics. Oh, you can't eat gold. Well, you can't eat digits on a screen or Federal Reserve notes either, dumbass. You hear the stupidest stuff, or some weirdo, broken down, tired, twenty one year veteran English teacher puts a post on a gold standard on his Facebook page, gets two likes. So. That's really the main thing why gold is so important. It limits governmental power and for all of their flaws. The Founding Fathers knew this. If you let central authority do what it wants and gain power, prestige, uh, leverage, and money and capital, it will go bad. It will get corrupt. This is not a novel concept. This is not something that is unique or was unique to the late 1700s human people are like that people are short-sighted they want their power look at what's going on politically now i've said this before all kinds of people pulling their hair out all over the place about donald trump i even saw a post the other day on like do you miss barack obama and i was going to comment but i you know I, i just stopped like How are you going to convince somebody who thinks that a president who dropped a bomb on brown people in the Middle East every 20 minutes for eight years was a friend to the big banks, bailed out large banks, did nothing to help the cause, was like the best president ever, and you miss that person? You're uh, the person, someone who puts that out there is obviously not paying attention and ignorant and does not want to be taught. And you see that kind of with. With, the, with, the, with economics and gold as well. People's own interests, their own ways, they want to group with people like them. They're not going to be open to new ideas, not if they're over the age of 25. You see the short-sighted, childlike nature of humanity in things like social media, the current political discourse, economics... You have professors in economics who laugh at people who advocate for the gold standard. You think you, people were mean to the kind of nerdy person in the back in middle school? That's nothing. The Austrian school like economists and the people who talk about the gold standard regularly, professors and big-time media types openly mock these kinds of people. Somebody like Peter Schiff, who understands gold, was laughed at with the housing crisis, right? He's, you don't see him proselytizing too much more about gold so much anymore, although he did on Joe Rogan's podcast, which was great. But you see, these people are kind of clowned on. Like, what are you going to do? What do you, gold is so silly. It's just old. You can't do that anymore. Well, that's untrue. But what it does, what gold does, is the top of the pyramid would be severely limited. All that FBI, CIA malfeasance in the black community and poor communities and flooding the neighborhood with crack and all of those bad things with COINTELPRO, none of that stuff could happen without it actually being paid for on the books. That's gold. That's what it does. When the dollar really takes a loss, and Schiff, Peter Schiff is your guy for this. I'm not going to, I can't walk you through it now. Um, and I might not do a good job at it. And so you listen to an expert. Go to, Peter, look up Peter Schiff on YouTube and you'll, you'll get what you need. But the way things are going, it sure does look like the American dollar at some point in the next, I don't know, 10 months, 10 years, does it matter? How old are you? We'll take the big loss. If you're holding arable land, silver or gold, particularly gold, you have a hedge against that kind of disaster because gold isn't going to lose its value like that. It's the dollar amount that goes up and down. Gold isn't worth $1,300 an ounce because it's better gold than it was in 1978 when it was $700 an ounce or $30 an ounce. It's not the gold that's changed. It's the dollar that's changed. So if you want to protect yourself, I sound like a commercial, you want to protect yourself, you should buy gold. Well, you should. And if you want to try to limit some of the nonsense that's going on today, maybe take a few minutes and look at what the gold standard is about and how it worked and why the planet, the planet, the earth, ran on a gold standard until the early 1900s through the mid-1900s.
That's how it was. And it worked. It wasn't broken. Talk to you soon. Have a good day.